Howdy, it is I, Junk, back again so soon. Happy Saturday, if it's still Saturday for you, and if not, happy whatever day it is. Yeah, I'm recording two weeks in a row. In fact, for me, this is really sudden because I recorded this whole thing without recording the, the video. And sometimes I just do generic video in the background, but I was actually looking at stuff in this video. So it was really inconvenient for me because I had to start all over. So I'm starting all over. Hi, how are you? <laughs> oh, it's magic being me today. Oh, uh, what to talk about? There's a few things I wanted to talk about. Let's start talking about this Shenlu, this third Shenlu here. I was trying to do something, or at least I thought I was trying to do something from a comment, and then after I did it, realized I hadn't read the comment carefully enough. There's a comment, which I'll put up on screen in a moment, saying to try three, three damage amps. I assume it meant nuke amps, so three nuke amps and the Seeker drone, which I did, but then I realized as I read the comment, it was for the Corona build, the, the Corona Glory build. Uh, pause to say, I don't necessarily agree with the premise of the comment that the Corona misses a lot to invisible bots. That hasn't been my experience. It doesn't do full damage, I agree with you, but Coronas and Glories are shotguns, and the Shenlu is a very short robot. It's going to hit, to some degree, what's in front of it. I have not experienced the problem where I'm losing tons and tons of kills to invisibility. That said, I am going to try it. I'm going to fix this. In fact, I actually had the glory on this thing. I had, the, I had the glory in the heavy slot. And then I was like, oh no, he wanted the Feng Bao and the Lei Ming, right? No, he didn't. But I didn't go back and check, so I just switched it. So that's the first thing. I apologize. We will do this properly. My, in fact, I've got Clannies waiting to invite me. I had to tell them, I'm recording. I'll be with you in a moment. <laughs> but let me do this. Okay. Um, the next thing, I just thought this was interesting. Uh, this is the the pilot, which I was building for this, and I noticed that there's both a Deft Survivor and a Clever Survivor skill here. Deft Survivor recharges the ability at 50% health. Clever Survivor recharges one charge after 50% after health. My initial reaction is, when would you ever want to recharge one charge if you could recharge a whole ability? My second thought then was, wait a minute, if recharging the ability doesn't end the ability and send you back to where you started, that means you're starting a new ability where you just hit 50% health. So basically you're in the line of fire and now when you teleport out, you're coming back to this place. I took it anyway, cause I'm kind of curious. But then I thought, is Clever Survivor any better if you hit 50% health and you're, the end of your ability teleports you back to where you started? Why would Clever Survivor, like, why do you want either of these skills? But I still took Death Survivor cause I'm kind of curious to see how I can make that work. I might switch it out from Modules Expert. We'll play with it a little bit. It did remind me of because at first I was like, why would you want Clever Survivor? And so it reminded me a little bit of the anglers. Let's I put them in here. If you if you start a new angler and you want to get Wonder Worker, it isn't available. No Wonder Worker here. It takes a minute to scroll through them all, but you can take my word for it. But yeah, there's no Wonder Worker. And I do have a number of pilots that have Wonder Worker down here. So the story behind that was when you first got, when the angler first came out, you could get Wonder Worker. So I got on a bunch of pilots and then suddenly one day it wasn't available. There was no discussion about why it wasn't available. So I harassed the devs enough through tickets that eventually one of them answered me and said, we took out Wonder Worker because it doesn't do anything. The problem is angler's ability takes it into phase shift, right? The robot accelerates and enters phase shift. In phase shift, you can't gain or lose any health. So Wonder Worker was supposed it was trying to add health to a robot in a state where no health could be added. I kept it anyway because it's cool to have an ability that nobody can get. It's also because sometimes the devs rework how an ability thing works and they don't necessarily go back and fix the pilot skills right away. So it's possible that one day they'll rework phase shift to a point where uh, Wonder Worker does add health. And you can say, what are the odds of that? It's like, well, I don't know like, what happened with Last Stand. How many times has Last Stand been reworked? Till now, you can, like, Titan weapons can just go through Last Stand, and the Ultimate Avenger can just go through Last Stand. It wouldn't have been that way with the earlier versions of Last Stand, but they reworked it until it did. So, hanging on to that just in case, one day that becomes important. Last thing I wanted to talk about before we get into these games, and there's four of them. I don't know why I'm doing four games now. Um, I'm just extra like that, maybe? I don't know. I know two is industry standard, and I just, I don't know. Sometimes it's just like four feels like the right number. So 
Anyway, uh, last thing I wanted to talk about was DGEMs. And I think we know why DGEMs exist. And this is, I'm going to shock everybody. I have a partially positive reaction to DGEMs. Partially. Mostly negative. The most, the reason for DGEMs existing is because, like any good gotcha game, they know that if they have an in-game currency and they can part you from your money, it won't feel like real money that you're spending and they can make you spend more. That's why in-game currencies exist, in case you didn't know. However, they did manage to add something to the way these currencies work that I actually do like. We're here in the DGEMs post. And I've highlighted you can choose to purchase DGEMs for yourself or a friend. And I do like that. There's been times where, you know, you're playing with somebody. I don't know, maybe this happens to me more than other people. You're playing with somebody and they're like, oh yeah, I saw that sale in the store, but I really can't afford it. Or, you know, I've, I've hit my spending cap, whatever that is. And there's just been times where I've been like, man, I just want to just like throw you some currency so you can go get that thing. Cause I know it would make you so happy. And uh, yeah, I haven't felt like, you know, it's weird to be like, why don't I send you like a Apple car gift card or something? That just feels weird. Like, I don't know people like that necessarily. But if you can just say, hey, give me your in-game ID. I'll send you some currency. That'd be awesome. Especially if you already know it because, you know, they're in your clan or something. That'd be great. So I do like that you can send DGEMs to a friend. I've also seen some YouTubers, there's the thing where like, if you buy gems through the web interface, they get like 5% or something. And um, that's interesting. I mean, any way to support people who are hustling, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm probably not going to do it for myself because it's kind of like, I don't know. I think I've expressed my attitude on this. Like I'm doing okay. I don't need it. If I don't need it, let somebody who needs it have it. I don't need to be. This is, you know, we're just having fun here. You and I, we're just hanging out. There's people who do this as their hustle and let the people who have this as their hustle hustle. Like I'm, I don't need to be taken away from, I'm not here to try to take away from people in the community who are doing this to try to make it a job. You know what I mean? That's not why I'm here. I'm here because I feel like not being involved in that gives me a different perspective and we can talk about things in a different way. But um, that's no shade to the people who are hustling for it. And I think uh, if you see somebody with that code who you like, shoot, by all means, support them. I'll be looking around to see if, uh, if, if the YouTubers I watch, I like get one of those codes. If BB gets one or Village Idiots get, you know, gets one, you know, I'm going to be putting some money on the books with that. So yeah, that's where my head's at right now. Jump back to the hangar. All right, back in the hangar. Um, last thing I'll talk about before the games is, yeah, I'm still one ultimate gendarme away. And I kind of talked before about if I don't get this, I'm thinking maybe I should just walk away because this is a slot machine. And if it's a slot machine, there's better payouts to be had. That's kind of still where my head is at. There's still nine days left. We'll see what happens. Uh, I did get another ultimate pulsar in the meantime. I want to just take a quick look at our, at our medium weapons here. Cause I don't even know, even I don't know how many ultimate pulsars I have at this point. Too damn many. I know that much. Did I pass them up? Were they up there? I'm sort of looking over the mic uh, boom arm type thing. Like the boom arm, but I'm looking over the, the mic arm to see this. Okay. We got, that's a, uh, the cool 10 ultimate pulsars there. There must be some on something because they should have more than 10. And down here, a whole lot of ultimate orkins. Here's the thing. The reason why I wouldn't want to leave the game is because of you guys, right? We, we're, we're, having, we're having a good time here. We're making <laughs> chicken salad, as the saying goes. We're making chicken salad out of this. And... It's great. Like, I really enjoy the community. At the same time, I don't think anybody should be able to, like, treat you badly. And I feel like if you can be immensely dedicated and not get the ultimate Ao Ming after using every single opportunity, there's something wrong with the system. There's something wrong with the system in a way that makes me think they don't really value their most dedicated players, which is what the ultimate stuff was supposed to be for to begin with. Anyway, not to be a downer. <laughs> I do have four games to actually show you that are a lot more exciting than this sad conversation. Let's move on to that. All right, we're here on Yamantau. Oh, lovely. Well, 
<laughs> and I got a teammate who blows up right away. You always want to see that. I dropped the bot with the longest range, the 600 meter subduers, the curie here. I have no plan and it's going to show very rapidly. We get that first cap and I'm just walking towards center because, you know, what do you do? I guess you walk towards center on this map. Could have gone for the secondary. Uh, I didn't have the greatest faith. I've, I've not looked at my teammates except to see one blew up. So I don't have the greatest faith in teammates in general. So I'm like, if someone's going to cap this, I better cap this. So I come to mid, what do I have? I've got a Nether, an Orochi, a Skyros, and two Ophions. Great, so five people shooting at me. Uh, someone takes out the Nether, Orochi, with the punchers. Comes in for its shot, takes a bit of damage, he goes into stealth. He, Ophion zooms in. I managed to get inside its shield, but my uh, subduers run out before I could do a whole lot of damage. And he backs off, and pretty soon I evaporate. Here we are. Somebody else takes out another one of them. I think Anophion got taken out. I drop into the Fengbao Shenlu. And now I do sort of have a plan. I'm going to teleport behind that robot. Zooms off and it gets blown up from behind. I start to flip the beacon. As soon as it flips, a Mars drops in. Now, I don't want to teleport behind the Mars. I ultimately do for a minute here, or for a second anyway. I don't want to teleport behind it because putting myself on the ramp exposes me to more fire from their secondary. But not teleporting behind it exposed me to, to direct fire from the Mars itself, so it was a calculated risk. And here I decide I'm going to try to take out something on their secondary, but my ability ends before I can get there. Walking back towards center now. I do look behind me. You always look behind you occasionally. I see there was a guy on our home, but my teammates took care of that. Walking towards center, I have one guy on the left and a whole bunch of guys on the right. And, uh, ooh, it looks like a crisis tried to take some shots at me, hit the wall. Teleport behind the Dagon. Dagon figures it out, but not in time. Triple kill. Here comes another Orochi. Was there a sale on Orochi? Is a second Orochi? Does it also have punchers? Because I killed one. Also with punchers. I guess there must have been a sale. And before I can get rid of it, uh, I take fire from the from their secondary beacon and I am gone. Let's drop the blue Shenlu with the ultimate glory and the ultimate corona. Start walking towards them. I don't know what I'm going to teleport to. I just know it's going to be in range. So this is a risky move. I get lucky it's a Mercury, and the Mercury doesn't quite get the turn around before he's gone, and I see the Ochokochi, Needle Ochokochi, Spike Ochokochi, and he does figure it out, but it takes enough damage that it doesn't matter. It's a double kill. So, what am I going to teleport to now? I see a Fenrir. Love to take out Fenrirs with these shotguns, because they just eat all of that damage. The Luchador jumps towards me as I teleport behind it, which flicks me up in the air. I'm taking shots from their home and the loot door. There is just nothing I can do. I am gone. So we're down three bots with seven minutes left. This isn't ideal. Don't play this way, generally speaking. <laughs> okay. I dropped the Eiffel. And I'm feeling pretty, actually pretty okay right now about the game because we've managed to contain them to one beacon, really. Like, they're taking some, some, some shots from their home, but it's really their secondary that they're at. This luchador is trying to get to center, but he eats all of the homing bullets from the Eiffel. And as I'm shooting into him, I'm thinking, I haven't actually looked back at home for a while. I should probably look towards home pretty soon, but I want this Luchador gone. Luchador down. And there was that Orochi at the corner of my eye on the right that I lost track of. So I'm thinking as I'm shooting this Luchador that, you know, I got to figure out what happened to that Orochi. Yeah, good thing I looked. Uh, always look behind you is, I think, one of the great rules of war robots that's uh, sometimes expressed, often not. Eat some damage from Reapers on my side there. Orochi goes into its ability to get that moment of stealth, but as I go up and its stealth ends, there is just nothing it can do. It could phase if it had a phase unit, but I don't know if he didn't have one or didn't use it, so the incinerator Orochi goes down. Got a rook here teleporting towards, or not teleporting, but, you know, castling towards center. Uh, our Indra taking some shots into it, and I get the assist on that. I guess the Indra got the kill. Here's one Skyros that's coming towards... I guess he was going to go towards home and decided that now that he's been seen, he's going to go do something else for a minute. Another Skyros coming here towards center. I put as much damage as I can into it. He's about to flip the beacon, and then... Shout out to the teammate here. The homie teammate landing his Ophion in center. Ophion versus uh, Skyros is not a great match for the Ophion. You can see the Ophion... Skyros was trying to push him out. That is one strategy. 
Uh, if I was a sky roast, I would have popped out and just tried to take him down while he was in the ground. The reason I'm dealing with this is because I've got the Titan weapons. Sky roast is tough because of damage resistance. Fully level Titan weapon goes through all damage resistance. It's my problem. I own the problem. Here we have an Ao Ming that does not last very long in the face of the homing bullets. And at this point, the game is, is getting close to over. We've got beacon lead, substantial beacon bar lead, and they're corralled under their home where we're just treating it like a shooting gallery. I see a Sirius, which is just silver for me, just easy silver. So let's go up and earn that money, get, get paid. What I think is a Fenrir, just based on the distance between the weapons. And you can't see the, the uh, actual bot. Look at the distance between the weapons. Sometimes you can at least get a guess. Another Mars. Oh, only an assist there. The Behemoth there is the same guy who had the Sky Rose in mid, so I kind of want the Because also, because, like, I respect Behemoth in general. But I also want to be like, you know, hey, I know you. <laughs> living Legend on that one. Take that second for the Living Legend. Landing on their home. And uh, there's not going to be time to cap. This game is over with the four cap. Yeah, game over. We won by beacon control. I got a feeling we would have mech them also if they were counting that. Let's check out the scoreboard. 10.1 million, three assists, 15 kills. Three beacons isn't a lot, but it's enough with 15 kills and 10 million damage. Not bad. Uh, Yamantau is a tough... I know people don't like Yamantau. I loved Yamantau. I missed it when it was gone. I was glad when it came back. Generally, I loved Yamantau because I loved having sniper builds, which I don't have any of in the hangar right now. So it was it was kind of like, you know, running into your ex-girlfriend when you're seeing somebody else. And it's like, a, like uh, I kind of missed that, but I kind of got a different thing going on right now. But it's good seeing you again. Let's see what map we get next time. All right, we're here in the Dreadnought. Dreadnought, a great, a great map in that it's got brawling, it's got sniping, it's got short, long, mid-range. The trade-off is you always got to be in your toes. I start to drift towards center. I do take a look back to make sure there's somebody getting our home beacon. I've had some games where that just doesn't happen. So I continue towards mid. What I'm looking for now is somebody I can teleport to who doesn't look like they're expecting me. It's tough since we all teleport now these days. And I teleport. It's a Lynx. Teleport behind the Lynx and cook the Lynx. I'm taking some shots here from the Mars. Teleport behind the Mars. And I don't know if he understands how the Shenlu works, but there goes the Mars. I see him getting sniped at by an Erebus. How to teleport behind the Erebus. Oh, and a friend drops in, too, for the Rampage. Not bad. There's the Angler. I managed to get a couple shots under the Angler, but my ability ends and I teleport back before the Angler can blind me. Do take a substantial bit of damage, but a Rampage, not a bad little first run for that ability. Just back up here. And what I'd like to do is, if that guy gets within range of C, of, of the center beacon, I want to teleport to him and then back up and take beacon D. He doesn't come in that direction, but instead, I get this Lynx. And the Lynx easily cooked this, uh, because I can't read the comments properly, which is, as I'm sure we'll talk about, this particular Shenlu has triple nuke amps. And the Feng, Bao, and Lei Ming weapons. Very short range, but with triple nuke amps, it is not hard to cook. Teleport here behind this Ophion, get myself an assist. I don't know where the rest of the damage came from. Teleport back because my ability is over. And now I see that we've got what I'm guessing is, is another Lynx contesting. Yeah, another Lynx. A Redeemer Lynx contesting this mid, which uh, I was able, able to help out my Kepri teammate there, though from his perspective, that might be a kill steal. Teleport behind a Crisis with Reapers, and he's aware I'm there, but isn't sure what he can do about me, and not much. He explodes into a fine mist. Rampage and start to flip Beacon D. Feels like I'm working hard. Does anybody else feel like I'm working too hard? I feel like I'm working too hard. So now I've got some options. Uh, I see they're on beacon. They got our home and their home, and they're contesting that middle beacon over there. I'm going to walk towards their home, but my ability's going to run up before I get there, and I knew that was going to happen, so what are you going to do, Stan Snow? Uh, I start to walk towards our home to see if maybe I can do something over here. Is there some... Can I help add some uh, damage over here? I don't know what's on that beacon. Teleport, and it's an Ochokochi hiding. I don't think he knows I'm there at this point. He finds out, he turns around, and that's me, all right. Drop the mute on him, get the kill. Can I do anything about this Ophion? Teleport behind him. Mm, his last stand still going. 
And I feel like I'm holding down this button. I'm not guessing anything. And it's just gone all of a sudden. Can't do anything about the Eiffel and the homing bullets, though. So now this isn't good. We've got one beacon and they've gotten or they've gotten. Uh, well, they've contested at least all all the one except that one. <laughs> but I put it that way. Uh, managed to drop in a D teleport behind the angler who was contesting our C. Take out the angler and get C back. Are they mecking? I can't tell if they're mecking or we're all like both teams are. No, I guess they're not mecking. Now, I don't know what this is. I'm going to get in range, drop the mute, teleport behind it. And it's a Heimdall. A Heimdall who evidently did not eat his Wheaties because he just got wrecked by a bot that comes up to his kneecaps. Let's see. Hmm. I got to choose. Do we fight on our on our home or their home? That's where the that's where the action is. Our home or their home. I feel like we got a lot going on on our home. I just drift towards their home and see if I can make them a little, at least paranoid. I don't know what I'm teleporting to, blind teleport, and wouldn't you know, it's a scorpion. Scorpion phases, sees me, teleports behind me. But uh, the thing about shotguns is they're shotguns. Meanwhile, I get taken out by those bendy bullets again. I decide I'm going to have to deal with this with this Eiffel. We, we can't have this Eiffel anymore. Teleport all the way, or teleport, spawn back at home. Drop the mute on the Ochakochi, help my teammates take that out. And that is a tough bot. When that nerf comes, it's going to be a rude awakening for people who have really come to rely on that. Let's see, we get back home. I see they've got an Indra. I see their Eiffel is up there in the air. And a Fenrir. So their Eiffel is, is going to go dash behind the Dreadnought. I'm going to try to put some damage on the Fenrir, but where he's positioned, I'm going to have to expose myself to fire from mid and Indra to get to it. And that's just, it is what it is. If I lose my bot, I lose my bot, but you got to break a few eggs. If I can't, listen, if we can't move this guy off the beacon, we're going to lose the game. So if that means I got to take some fire to do it, then I got to take some fire to do it. And I just hope I win that exchange of fire. Fortunately, he does not seem to be particularly resistant. I get to beacon B and start to flip it. They drop a Newton who lifts me up in the air. I immediately go into my ability and the Newton chews me up pretty good, but I drop the mute and get through it. Meanwhile, their Eiffel. Credit to their Eiffel player because he sees an opportunity and he's not wrong. I'm very vulnerable right now. He gets me in the air and he starts emptying his weapons into me. Thank goodness for the team support there by the Aether because if that Eiffel had just been left to his own devices, he'd have taken me out, I'm pretty sure. Now I go up. I know there's still this Indra and I'm trying to get the Indra to come out so we can take, take care of him because that Indra is just too dangerous to leave there. Get the Titan Slayer on the Indra. We've got a teammate there who's going to contest their home. Who drops in an Ophion? Uh, try to put a shot at you on him, but of course, Absorber Shield stops that. Now, I know there is still the Eiffel, and he knows it's me. So he starts shooting into me. I start shooting into him. My ability goes off second, so his ability ends first. And it's close, but we take each other out at the same time. <laughs> very, very like spaghetti western ending there. So you take out the, this is the Curie with the Ultimate Avenger, drop the turrets, the Mute stops the Emuji from going too far, their Curie goes down, here we have the Dagon with, I guess, a bunch of bendy bullets, get the Dagon down, somebody dropped the Mothership on us, it's looking like 4-2 to two right now, it's getting a little hectic for them, I'm gonna go back to mid here, uh, I don't know, like one of two things is going to happen, right? The Rook turns around and sees me and I see he's starting to turn now, or he goes on without me. If he turns around and sees me, I want that smoke. I want to have this fight right now because I think I can take him. With the Ultimate Avenger, I think I can take him. Sure enough, with the Ultimate Avenger and some help, I take him. And now I'm just walking over towards Beacon D. There's a lot of Beacon Bar left here. Three, minute le three minutes left in the game and a lot of Beacon Bar, although we are about to four cap, it looks like. I dropped the Mute there on that robot on top of the Dreadnought. I don't know what it is at this point in the game. I come to find out it's a Dagon. Now I can see it's a Dagon. But I recognize the tag was the guy who was in the other Eiffel. <laughs> we took each other out at the same time. So it's like, yeah, I, I, I know you're dangerous. I don't need to know what you're in to mute you. I just know you're dangerous. I can't have you run around here with the ability to target people. So I'm ready to close in and take him out. But just as I am, the game ends. And let's see how we did, because I felt like I was working pretty hard. 
Did it feel to you like it was? I felt like I was working hard. Let's see how we did. 10.2 million, two assists, 21 kills and six beacons. Yeah. 21 kills is, 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 is a lot. And you, and you can see the guy, uh, Benelis there, who is in the other Eiffel, was working pretty hard too. 8.4 million, 11 kills would be a solid day. It just, it isn't solid enough when you got 10.2 and 21 on the other side. So, uh, hat tip though, man, because you, you definitely kept me, kept me working hard. All right, next game, let's do it. Okay, we're here on Canyon, and hopefully this will be a little bit less intense than our prior game, a little bit more relaxing, as I recall, uh, to the extent I recall it. Still a long-range map with a short-range boss. We're going to drop in the green Shenlu. This does not have the triple nuke amps. This has one nuke, one repair, and one anti-control. Ultimate glory, two ultimate corona, and that there is the Kestrel, because it still does on kill fix for right now. I just want to get in range of something. Don't know what I'm teleporting to. I get nervous when I see the absorber and it's a Hades. So we just walk up into the armor. There goes the last stand. And we get the kill on that. And while I'm here, hey, you know, the Reaper Crisis. Gotta love the Reaper Crisis when you're uh, holding shotguns to it. And I see I get taken out by a harpy. Well, okay, let's drop the blue Shenlu. It's uh. The same bot, except it has a 5% skin, and it has the the pilot that gives you 8% damage from lockdowns, Kate O'Donnell. Take out that harpy who got me. Let's flip the beacon. And I noticed we don't have a lot of beacons here. We've got C and D. Somehow we nobody went to get beacon E, is that or did we, did we lose it? Anyway, another Reaper crisis here for the double kill. Teleport down here to an Orochi with Exodus. Get the assist for that. No, don't manage to take him out. I mute this Curie, and I want to drop down and get the Curie, and I appreciate... You can see my... I appreciate my teammates. Skyros, for some reason, is unfolded. I take him out with two shots. And I'm ready to take out this Curie the rest of the way, and all of a sudden now, I've got a lot of teammates. It's like, hey, guys, look, there's, there's other beacons here. Like, I appreciate it. I get the Rampage, thankfully, and it's like, if you're going to be up on me like this, I'm going to need you to buy me a drink first. This is too much closeness for me. Go do something else. Take out the Dagon. I'm getting shot from above again, this time clearly by an Eiffel. <laughs> and I want to take out this Mender, but the Mender takes me out. That is a good day in Mender history. The Mender took out the Shen Lu. You're going to want to frame that on the wall, because that's never going to happen again. All right. Kyrian, I hate to use my ability like this, but I've got to get over to this beacon. I don't know how nobody took this beacon. I mean, I'm as guilty as anybody else if it was from the start. So, and I'm thinking, no one's going to drop in. You'd have to be crazy, and... Wouldn't you know crazy drops in? And I don't even know if I should dig nuts. I mean, a hybrid build Typhon that had a barrel drone, and that was not a good use of that web, of that uh, Typhon. There's very little you could have dropped on that beacon that needed to be in close proximity to this bot. So if you're dropping blind, I understand, because I've been there. I, I, I teleport blind, I get it, but if that was a reason choice, make different choices. All right, I'm walking here to their, their beacon, and... Wouldn't you know? <laughs> um, I drop a mute on that scorpion, not because I needed to mute the scorpion, but because I knew I was going to be getting a lot more points here. Like, I'm already up to 56%. So, I have double uh, durability amps on the mothership. So, it's better for me to hit the mothership as often as I can, knowing it'll recharge, rather than hold it and lose out on total durability because I could have recharged it. So, that's my thought process on that. Titan Slayer taking out that Eiffel that took me out. I'm gonna dash over here, give a little attention to that Newton, because I know that Newton would be after me if it could. The targeting system would allow me to hit the Newton, thank you. Curie, jogging over. And I see that guy's in a duo, and yeah, that's a tough duo. Hey, hey man. Uh, drop the mute on him, because he will take me out with those things. Th th those, uh, believe me, uh, I as well as anyone know the power of the ultimate glory. Take out another Eiffel. I'll start putting some damage on the Luchador here. But I know I'm going to be getting chased down uh, <laughs> by the Curie. He's chasing after me, and he's clearly going to get the kill. So I start looking for my next bot. There it is. Drop in my Subduer Curie. Help out my Luchador teammate here a little bit. Not that he necessarily needs it. And we just drop the mute on what looks like a teeny tiny Heimdall. Was that an Ocho Kochi? I don't even know what that was. And the game is over before I can figure it out. No more time for bot forensics. Let's check the scoreboard.
really a quick one. 6.6 6 damage, 2 assists, 12 kills, 3 beacons. I mean, I got about half my normal stats, but it's about half the, uh, half the time. And, uh, shout out to the, to the BC guys over there. Good, uh, good run in India, always. All right, I think we got one more game. I got one more game in me to show you. Let's, uh, let's get into that one. Okay, we are here on Castle. Three Shenaloo, two Kiri. As I take a sip of my coffee here. Forgive me. I've been talking a lot. You've been here. Feng Bao Laming, Shenlu, Triple Nuke Amp, Secret Drone, White Star Pilot. Jogging up towards the top. I usually go top on Castle because usually I'm playing a, a sniper. This is not that kind of a meta. We got three reds coming to their top. What I do notice is uh, they aren't very careful about their ranges. If you know it's a teleport meta and the range is 350, why would you come into that range if you didn't have somewhere to be? I teleport behind the Dagon. Dagon turns around, gets a few shots into me, but it is not enough. And the Dagon pretty quickly gets fried. Now, remember, I did see two Skyros rolling towards our home, and I'm remembering that as I'm sort of walking towards their home. Subdura Kiri drops in, another uh, Shen Lu with a similar build drops in. I am quickly fried. But because I remember there were two Skyros, I drop in the Ultimate Avenger Kiri. Ultimate Avenger bypasses damage resistance, and the Skyros' power is basically damage resistance. So it's very easy for the Ultimate Avenger Kiri to get a double kill here, taking out both of their bots. I drop the Mute. And the muted Shenlu teleports over. The mute doesn't stop him too much because he doesn't need to aim with his weapons. But he does teleport back before that ability can end. So as my ultimate Avengers reload, I walk towards their home and I know what's going to happen, or at least I anticipate what's going to happen. He's going to teleport back to me again. I take out their Kiri for the triple kill. The Shenlu teleports behind me. I drop my turrets, drop backwards, get the rampage on that Shenlu, and I just take the low road up to the top beacon. On my way there, I get a, uh, some assault from this mixed nether, get hit by an Ophion, and the ultimate Ao Ming shoots me a couple times, stabbing me in the heart on the leaderboards. Why not stab me in the heart here, too? The nether goes down for the godlike, and the ultimate Ao Ming, for some reason, loses all interest in me, which I'm about to exploit to his severe detriment. Drop my turrets as I go to their top beacon. A stake lynx chases after me, and I have to say, um, he has a whiteout drone not the right move, in my humble opinion. A Stake Lynx is a great bot against a lot of matchups. The Curie is just too strong. Even with help, I don't think I would have made this choice. Uh, easy for me to say in hindsight, too. But I've run the Stake Lynx. It's a great robot in a lot of things. I'm not a shielded bot, so I just don't think its main ability accrues any benefit to it, and it goes down. That ultimate Ao Ming that took no curiosity in me wishes he had some more curiosity as he goes down. Drop the Mute on the Sirius. I'm still getting shot here by an Ophion. There's a Subdura Curie about to run up their middle. A friendly Luchador drops in, but I'm taking a lot of fires. I'm trying to put some shots onto this Sirius. And uh, I get locked and uh, knocked down, as I think I was locked. I drop in my own Subdura Curie against their Subdura Curie, and I love this. You see the Sirius is creeping up towards the home beacon. He sees the Subdura Curie. He goes back behind cover. Some would call it cowardice. Others would call it strategy. You believe what you want to believe. Meanwhile, this Curie is getting shot by a Luchador and me get the assist on him, and now the Sirius and I have a discussion to have. Mute that Sirius again, and as I walk towards him, the friendly Luchador leapfrogs him, so he's getting shot from two sides, drop my turrets, and the turrets get the kill on the Sirius. So we've got three beacons. We're flipping C. I go to the one beacon that is not ours or being flipped. Their beacon B, their home. Double kill there on the Ophion, another Stake Lynx, which as I said before, I think is a bad matchup. It's about to be a bad matchup again. I get that you're very tricky, it won't help you here. You need more firepower than this to take out a Subduer Kiri. This is a bad matchup. It really is. I, it's not your bot, your build is great. This isn't the matchup for you, bruh. This isn't the matchup for you. Go take another, like, he should be using his speed to go take other beacons. Now he's five capped and, and, and his bot's gone, so that was just a bad choice in my humble opinion. You know, you do you, but I, I would not have taken that matchup in his bot. All right, so five cap, six to two. I think it's getting close to the end of this game. Uh, I try to I try to save Beacon A. I can't get there in time, so I just drop in my Eiffel to Beacon B. And stop the Ophion there from getting the flip. Meanwhile, somebody else kills the guy on Beacon A. They don't cap it. What drops in here? Looks like a Heimdall? No, it's a, it's a Newton. Newton drops in and a Curie drops in. It was like, that's curiously 
I guess if that's what you got, that's what you got, but boy, is that not what I want to be in when I see an Indra coming towards me? And we're just mopping up here. At this point, it's just, uh, how much silver can we grab before we get the win? It was very intense. Uh, was it me? It felt like a very intense game here. But this is why a lot of times, like, assaulting the top beacon is helpful in a map like this. If you can, if you can disrupt their game plan by forcing them to turn around or punishing them for not turning around, these games can get very quick. There's the victory. And let's take a look at our scoreboard here. See, it's not a bad bit of silver. Oh, I didn't didn't take the increase though. <laughs> 7.5 million, two assists, 13 kills, five beacons. Not a bad day's work, I would say. So, if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you for watching all the way through. If you're a dog or cat at home alone, I'm sure you're a good puppy or kitty and that your parents are bringing you a big treat when they get back. I will talk to you again, maybe sooner than you think. Later.